War. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Five Minute Gaming with Mike. And today, I'm going to start out the show and sing you a little song. Return to base, return to base, you're fighting a laser war. And I thought that would be the perfect way to introduce my guest, David Thiel, here to talk about the very first pinball machine he did sound for from 1987. And David, I can't think of a more awesome year because that was the year I graduated from high school, of course. So 87 rules. I said that pretty much my whole career up until senior year. And this game came out in that glorious year. It did. It was quite an event for me. I had worked at a pinball company. I worked at Gottlieb, but we were doing video games. And the pinball guys didn't like us, the video game division. So, I mean, they were nice and all, but they were struggling. Everybody in pinballs, even at Williams, were struggling because video games were just taking the lion's share of money and attention. And it was strictly in Europe where they were still selling machines and a few in America, but not much. So they didn't much care for us. And I, I never dreamed that, let's see, it was about six years later, I'd be working on a pinball machine. <laughs> And I assume development of this would have been in 1986? Yeah, I think it started late in 86. The company that I was with, we were from a company that had quit, had failed, and we were all owed money. So we just decided to create our own company because we liked to do what we were doing. Richard Ditton had always wanted to write a pinball operating system. He was a very brilliant guy. He actually was a rocket scientist. He had left his job at Kennedy Space Center down in Florida, Cape Canaveral, after they launched the first shuttle. He had been part of the team that had done shuttle launch software. So he came to Chicago and worked in game companies, uh, Marvin Glass and video games that had been published by uh, Midway. Mm -hmm. So Journey was one of his. And then I met him at this company and we worked together about a couple of years. And then that company went under and then his wife who worked there as well. The three of us were working out of our houses making ends meet, doing conversions of a game that we had done at that failed company. I don't know who Richard knew. It might have been Larry DeMar. I never knew how he got the contact, but I remember a meeting in Richard and Elaine's living room where Gary Stern showed up with his financial partner and they told us they needed software. They were going to start a pinball company and like his father had done with Bally, so Stern pinballs the, the first time at Bally, when they started that company, they had knocked off the electronics and used that for Stern. And so they were going to knock off the Williams System 11 system and use that. Now, there's a huge advantage to a new company doing that because that means people, operators and distributors, if a logic board breaks, well, they've got another one from Williams and they can just plug that into the Data East game. So they don't have to introduce a whole new set of electronics into the thing. And so operators and distributors like that. So they were going to do that. Now, the problem is it's legal to copy, work backwards from, hey, we put these parts on a circuit board and it works. However, you need an operating system. You need a lot of software to run a pinball machine, even at this point. And that's copyrighted to death. The pinball industry is very litigious as well. So they would have chased mm -hmm. anybody who attempted to mess with their IP. Somehow we convinced them, oh, we can do it. <laughs> We've never done any pinball. We know nothing except we like pinball. So Richard worked backwards from schematics in a white room, created this operating system. And Lonnie Rapp was one of the early employees and this contract work with Data East was big enough that allowed us to move out of our houses into a 10,000 square foot space in Arlington Heights. So that was it. And Laser War was the first one. Well, and with that, I'm gonna bring up the flyer of Laser War having between David and I Data East presents Laser War, and there's some space graphics behind it. There's even a space station, which reminds me of the space station from Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Looks just like it. <laughs> so that is page one of the flyer. And then if you flip it over and get to the back, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of this text information that you see here. This is where, again, these flyers are selling this game to operators, getting them to purchase the game to put it in their arcades. This says, it is bullet point number one, the first system specifically designed for digital stereo. And that's history right there, digital stereo. And you can hear that stereo like crazy. And I love it. I love it. And that was you, David, right? I assume you're the yeah. guy who said, all right, we're going to do stereo, guys. Well, the client agreed. It really was a very small 
dollar increment to do it because even Williams used two speakers in the back box is they used the same chip basically and they wired it for mono. The feeling was, and they were very adamant about mono for a long time because yes, I will admit that a pinball machine is a suboptimal reproducer of spatial audio, left and right cues. The speakers are almost six feet away and they're not that far apart. And so it wouldn't do that with speakers if you were trying to listen to hi-fi and get a nice stereo image. You would place them further away, further apart. But it still works. And the nature of this chip, it was easy. The easiest thing to do was to pan things far left and far right or center. Mm -hmm. There were only three bits involved. One bit made it left, one bit made it right. You put both bits on, you got it centered. And those cues work. So from the very beginning, everything was spatialized. You hit the red targets on the stand-ups. You hear those only out of the left speaker. There is some panning things when you go around on the ramps and stuff where sure. it goes left, center, right. So everything is spatialized to an extreme degree so that the cues work. So you close your eyes and just say, oh, I'm hitting things on the left, I'm hitting things on the right. Well, and we will notice that today drastically. Yeah, you're capturing it. It's wonderful just how you can hear it so cleanly from the left and the right. It also says over 24 watts of bruising power, not just power, bruising power. There's that marketing speak there. All new Chrome speaker enclosure with digital speakers, advanced speech and special effects, advanced space age ABS material, a compact one piece <laughs> modular design, power, durability. It uses standard coils, new shapes and sizes, new colors, advanced player appeal. The hits just keep on coming. All new, most advanced custom software, unique, easy to use bookkeeping and adjustments, auto percentaging, blah, 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 all the great things. But here's the best part. A flipper so strong, it could crack walnuts. That was their thing, right? Is they spent a bunch of time, because they have a fairly steep, short and steep ramp on Laser War. And you need some oomph off the bat to get around that thing. There's 50 volts of oomph to be exact. They spent a bunch of time trying all different kinds of windings and coils and stuff to really have some hot flippers. I suspect, I don't know if they were getting up to what Williams had or they forced Williams to get hotter. I have no idea. Yeah. I was a video game guy. I was new in all this. I know what they were working on and they spent a lot of time making the flippers really hot. And we might be hearing this pretty soon. Once in a while during a track mode, it plays the very song I sang at the beginning of the show. And I have something to say about that. So when that comes, whatever we're in the middle of talking about, we need to stop because I want to comment on that. But my last question is back in the day in 86, David, and I always look very fondly back at these times because there was no cell phones, no internet. You could finish a thought without being distracted. <laughs> I mean, you talked on the telephone if you had to call someone. I look fondly at those times and I think about all of you designing this game. And I think one of the great thing is, is I think you could all focus. You could all just really make this great and not be interrupted too much. Is that true? It was true. And especially for us, because we were a separate company from the manufacturing company. It was more than 20 miles away, Melrose Park. There was a lot of chaos as they were trying to create a pinball company. As the last few years have shown, pinball is not easy. A lot of new companies after Stern have tried to build a line, assemble all the parts, find people mm -hmm. with skills to put these things together, and some have failed. Or some have been incredibly late. It's hard. It's real hard. Gary Stern had this in his blood. I mean, he had been part of the Stern Pinball Company when his father owned it. And so he had a leg up. He knew what he was getting into more so than many who are attempting this endeavor. But it's still real hard. And we were separate from that. And it was real good. And, and yeah, we would get the crazy phone calls. <laughs> and being the new kid on the block, Jade East was being driven by a, a sense of, oh, Williams just put out a game and it's doing this and they're giving away 750,000 points. We have to give out a million points. <laughs> they were very reactive to anything that the uh, competition was doing. And that would then be that phone call because it was already coded. We already had it done. And then we would get this phone call. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to redo that because it's got to be bigger. It's got to be competitive. So that distance was great. And yeah, we could really focus. Do you remember your typical hours of work? Because back then you worked an eight to five, right? It wasn't 24 <laughs> hours like it is now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, we were a small company. I mean, at that time, there might have been 12 or 16 of us. And, you know, small companies, you do everything. So you sweep and you, you just do whatever it takes. Um, and for me, this was all new technology. I'm dealing with a 
client who's in Melrose Park off the phone, and also the engineering's being done near Tokyo. And I'm using a part. The prime thing that I'm trying to figure out how to use is a Yamaha 2151, and I get this manual. The Japanese, they don't read from right to left. They read from left to right, and every once in a while, their descriptions of bit fields get inverted. Mm. That's not obvious. And so you're trying to program something, and it's not... Oh, oh you want to hear this? I'll stop. All right, there it is, the famous song that I assume, David, that you penned the lyrics. Oh, yeah. The tune. So I've listened to this song a lot over the week as I've been practicing and preparing for a show. And the one thing about it is I really would love the second line to be a rhyme. And so in the spirit of that, I came up with some of my own second line. So instead of return to base, return to base, I was thinking I want it to be like return to base something. So how about this? Return to base from out of space. You're fighting a laser war. So that's one, but I got some more. And then you can tell me which one you like. Okay. So I've got, you're out of place. Time to save your face. Don't leave a trace. Pick up the pace to a warm embrace. Give up the chase. I like your lace. Don't be space ace. You're not a disgrace. With your can of mace, just in case, and wear your brace. And lastly, which I think you'll like the most, the speakers need more bass. <laughs> Gotta keep in mind, it's it's only a two minute game. <laughs> now the ending song is like a full minute and a half long. <laughs> well, I figure, you know, we just pick one of those. So I see. Well, we can alternate through them. Yeah. So I just thought rhyming is awesome. And I just kept thinking, I'd love to hear a second line there. So there you go. That's my submission to the 87 development. Uh, if only you Excellent. had me around, right, to help out with that. I freely admit, I have my strengths, the sound things, being able to hear stuff, and that's my strength. As a writer, never been my strength. And poetry, never my favorite thing. So the fact that I put lyrics in there, they're always bare bones and functional. Just something for me to put rhythm and notes to. Well, I'm glad you did because you made the machine sing a little bit. I love that. But you've talked at length about how many of the tunes you create for these games, you have words of your own. We just don't get to hear them. Well, whenever you enter into one of these endeavors where you're trying to entertain people in a crowded field where there are other people trying to entertain them too, and you want to go, hey, listen to me, <laughs> pay attention to me. I have something to offer that's different than what they're offering. Chris Graner had already been there. He was one of the first practitioners of doing this FM music on mm-hmm. these new systems. He'd done at least four or five games by the time. So I had his work and I listened to it. The finest example from my point of view was Pinbot. So imagine you're me and you're playing a pinball. We had a few pinball machines to inspire us so that we could figure out what we're doing. The famous vocoder talking pinball. Yeah, and I played a fair amount of pinball and I was very impressed. But still to this day, my favorite piece by Chris, it has a certain style. The FM chip is incredibly flexible and do all kinds of stuff. If you compare pinball with Laser War, <laughs> it's hard to believe it's almost the same technology because it really is a very different and it's on by design. I had a different message and I didn't want to copy what Chris was doing. I wanted to find my own voice for this and hopefully entertain people in a different way. And my stuff I think is a little more tuneful. His stuff is much more electronic and more about textures. I don't think anybody walks away from a pinbot whistling a tune. <laughs> Good point. And I had a pinbot for a while in my collection and I can quote the pinbot voices very well, but the tune, yeah. I, it's kind of there. If I go back, I can visualize it a little bit. Well, I'd like to just start the game because we can keep talking because there's things to talk about in the game. So I'm going to put my credit in. Laser War. Now, first question. Laser. Was that you? No, no. We hired a, I never met the guy. Uh, the sessions were done without me. But he had that monster voice, that laser mm. war thing. And that's not me. See, I was convinced that was you and the female voice was your wife, Carol. I was sure of it, but it sounds like I'm wrong. Yeah. No, no, no. They went out and found people they liked and just gave me tapes. All right. Welcome, warrior. Welcome, Warrior. Welcome, Warrior. Energizing. Care to comment on this shooter group? Well, I like to have dynamic range. I like to be able to start here. And a lot of my clients are sometimes irritated with that. They want to start here. They want candy right away. I like to be able to start here so we have somewhere to go. So as things build, as we lock balls and things happen, every step, every time we ratchet it up and it gets bigger and bigger. This is still, I think, kind of energetic, just a little bit funky. And it's got a groove. Hey, what are we doing? We're waiting. Put the beer down, plunge the ball. (laughs) 
Brian Schmidt would like this group because he's a bass player and he always talked about in his pinball machine music he'd always like the bass to do the lead. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. We're making five voice music. And that's a discipline, right? How can you make something out of only five simultaneous sounds? A drummer makes more than five simultaneous sounds, right? Yeah. So you obviously have to pick and choose. The drum channel for me is alternating between sometimes three different sounds in that one channel and I'm sort of time multiplexing them so that it, it provides the illusion that I've got more stuff than I actually have. And I have that thing, it's almost like a clap. Mm -hmm. That backbeat is almost like a clap. I mean, this is all synthetic. These are all just patches. And making a snare drum, I'm really proud of my snare drum. FM doesn't make snare drums very well. And Williams did a smart thing. They could run two channels out of their EPROMs. So they used sampled drums very frequently. And I had to reserve my one channel for voice. I almost never used any musical elements out of my sampled channel. Everything is FM. So before I launch the ball, one of the coolest things, David, I noticed when I was practicing is listen to the stereo flipper sounds. It's like yep. I'm, I'm in a laser battle. That is so cool that you did that. It was just, that was part and parcel of everything being spatialized as, as much as I could do. And here we go, and I can see the red and yellow and blue targets, clearly things I have to go for. And boy, I really have to pull this shooter rod back really far. Okay, yellow is your bank, because you went through the yellow lane. Oh, good to know, I did not realize that. Okay, so hit, go for the yellow targets. And my brain is just saying, well, I gotta hit that big metal ramp up there, that gigantic cool looking ramp. Eventually. Okay, so you can lock a ball now. See the, the flashing yellow uh, thing on the middle? Uh, yeah, with the spinner. Lighter. The spinner. Yeah. You make that, that'll lock a ball. Music changes. Music change. That this is now one ball lock music. Return to base. I'm fighting a laser war. Okay, and you go through yellow. Three, two, one. Fire, yellow. Now, oh, what? So now I'm in a two ball multi ball. Fire, yellow. Yep. That's interesting. Okay. I don't quite understand why it didn't stay locked. You, it, it's a quick multi-ball. You have, you have a, per, a small period of time. Okay. That the ball will stay locked before you lock another one. You have no balls locked again. So I'm starting over. By the way, I'm hit. I hear that sound when I drain, and it's like, hurt, 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 hurt. But I can't tell what she's saying. Medic. Oh. It's calling for a medic. Medic, I'm hit. Medic, I'm hit. Oh, okay. It sounds like, hurt, 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 hurt. I couldn't. Okay. Well, now I know. Yeah. The 80 PCM compression was pretty brutal in those days. I made the shot, but it wasn't the million dollar shot, it was just the shot. Yeah, it's still rewarding. Well, and when you don't know the rules, you come up to a game like this, you just want to hit that shot. It's yeah. just screaming, shoot me. Now I understand. Medic, I'm hit. I can hear it now. I just needed it explained to me. Better I've got to pull 
pull back on that shooter rod a lot more than I used to. Oh. No pity ball. Now, this is back when men were men. <laughs> and women were women. <laughs> Bad bounce. I can't tell you enough how much I love the sounds and music from this game, though. Just, it's so 80s to me. And when I was practicing this week on the game, I just love living in this world again. And hearing these sounds and this music, it just brings a smile to my face. And even a small part of my brain thought, I need to find this game and put it in my collection. But then quickly I realized, no, I can't do that. I don't have any room. So, <laughs> but you know somebody who might have one. <laughs> Who's that? Victor. Victor Tan. Oh, Victor Tan. I, I will make sure Victor watches this show. He is a great, great guy. He's helped me with he my is. games fixing problems. And he really knows circuit boards more than anyone I know. I respect Victor because when he takes his games to the uh, Seattle show, they all have headphone jacks in the front of them. He had a line of like 10 or 12 Bally Williams games, and I could plug into every one of them. And I played them all because I'm very frustrated at shows not being able to hear the games I'm playing. Well, he really obviously cares about sound. Yeah, he does. Okay, you want to return the flashing yellow lane. Can't do much when I drain like that. And I set this to a nine ball game just to help me get somewhere. Hopefully we can hear some cool sounds and... You're going to have a great last ball, Mike. <laughs> Look at that. I knew not even to flip on that. Or not. Straight down the middle. Straight. As in super straight. And there it is. I'm going to have to play another game, David. I feel like I didn't do anything. There it is. I am going to return to base. Welcome, warrior. Ladies. Energizing. I went for the exact shot I wanted to get and I hit it and then I drained because of it. Risk reward. the ball in the red lane and the yellow's flashing you can lock a ball in yellow if you get there but it sounds like it's going to release that ball pretty fast yeah it is there it goes three two one oh. 
today on this one. This is actually very hard. I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes. I, the fact that I don't have much time. Yes. Oh, oh I the shot. That was I made the shot. Was I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Medic, I suck. <laughs> Double outlane drain. <sighs> I feel like I'm I'm fighting a, a curse. It's like I'm having my own problems. You're having power you're outages. I can't do crap in the game. <sighs> you're, you're fighting a laser war, Mike. <laughs> I am. No. Oh. Like, ah, I need one of the professional pinball players to come in here and tag team with me. You get Victor. It's like in Wayne's World where they say, can we get a real actor in here, please? And Charlton Heston steps in. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's nothing I can do about that. I see it going and I'm like, okay, it's, it's going to go. I can't save it. I find on this game, it seems more difficult to trap the ball than I'm used to. Look at that, it's crash and burn. All right, you want me to try again? Sure. Welcome, warrior. Don't suck, warrior. <laughs> oh. I mean, you're doing well on points. Really? You're almost at a million, yeah. Oh my gosh. Hard day at the office, Mike. This is a hard day. <laughs> Jeez, I'm just feeling the frustration like that over and over and over. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. Just brutal, brutal. Playing this game with all the times I'm draining as a kid, this is why I would gravitate towards video games because I could yeah, make my quarter sure. last longer. The pinball, yeah. so many times I'd put a quarter in and my game was over so fast and I think, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have any fun and my quarter's gone. And so I would yeah. go back over to Cubert. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Cubert's looking pretty good right now. Yeah. <laughs> Cubert, I could last an, at least a minute or two, but in some of these pinball games, you know, three ball game, I mean, my game was over in a matter of 30 seconds. Oh. Oh. Look at that. Oh. No. That was new. That was a good thing. Oh, oh, trying to get past trying, it. Trying to pass it. Flash again. It's all falling apart, David. It all came crashing yes. down on me. You were so close. You win. You win. You won a game. That was a replay. That was me. Yeah, it sounded like you. That was me. I guess we didn't have the laser guy recorded, so I did it. <laughs> you win! You win! You <laughs> win! <laughs> the guy from Indiana, you win! <laughs> Soon to become, you win the game. I'm gonna go again. If you're willing to sit with me, I'll do it again. I'll watch, absolutely.
You're maxed to 5x. I think. Yeah, they're all lit. There's one. What's our status here? Okay, I'm a, oh, they're all lit. They're all, all lit. Three. Okay, make make the make the big ramp shot. I think. Okay. Play field is 2x multiplier. That's it! Shoot the ion cannon! Shoot the ion cannon! This is it, Mike! Just, just cup that ball. Try, try to keep that ball in play. I did it, but I'm so serious right now because I've been so stressed. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the. Uh, That's for victory laps. Yeah. So I did it. That was you it. Did. That was it. You can throw the game away now. <laughs> <laughs> well, David, you stuck with me through a lot of... Our viewers are going to not have to sit through all the games you had to sit with me to get here. Uh, that's it. And, and and now you're in some exalted scoring regime. Oh, and do not tilt whatever you do. Because my bonus, yeah, I would, I would yeah, your bonus. bonus is just off the charts. Fire, red. Plus, you you won an extra ball. scores Here we go Thank 
you, David. Flash again. Oh, gnarly bonus sequence. That was good. <laughs> that baby winds up. Anything else you'd like to say about this game after having watched me play many, many balls? I'm, I'm ready to return to base. <laughs> we did a show a couple weeks ago in Torpedo Alley. Ooga, ooga, dive, dive, dive. Yeah. That was a really fun yeah. one. I did some cool stuff in there. I'm going to put a link up here to Torpedo Alley. And please come with David and I over to that show and we'll play some more pinball for you. Uh, it's a good shot.